Hello, I'm Rashard Smith. Thank you for tuning in. I would like to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Mr. Rick W. Smith Sr. You may know him as the first African-American president and CEO of United Way of Ross County, but you may not know that he also concurrently serves as vice president of institutional advancement and community relations of Northern Pennsylvania Regional College in Warren, Pennsylvania. He also operates Smith Consulting Solutions, or SCS Inc., a consulting company that does fundraising, marketing, crisis communication, and diversity and inclusion training. Something else you may not know is Mr. Smith, or Dad as I like to call him, was the first African-American vice president of two major healthcare systems, one located in Dothan, Alabama, the other in Danville, Kentucky. My father is a published author who holds degrees and certifications from the University of Louisville, Kennedy Western University, Indiana Purdue University, Cornell University, and soon a doctorate degree from Bradley University. I'd like to leave the rest of the talk to him, so please let me introduce to you Rick W. Smith Sr. Well, thank you, Richard. Put the pressure on me. I really appreciate uh, Richard introducing me. I'm very proud of him and all of my three sons. Uh, very proud of all of them. As Richard, a recent college graduate from the Kansas City Institute of Art, chases his dream of being a professional artist. Thank you for having me here this evening. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you here. Although, of course, we'd like to be in person. Through faith, we'll be able to meet again in person soon. But for right now, I'm glad that we can at least come together in this virtual delivery system uh, and still connect. And in this case, celebrate what we now call Black History Month. I'm thankful to NAACP president, Miss Adrienne DeSosa. She's one of my board members. Glad to have her here and glad for the invitation. Also glad that I uh, uh, have the invitation from Mr. James Hill, our library director who's also one of my board members. So I'm pleased to have both of them uh, here and participating in this event. And I appreciate the Chillicothe Ross County Public Library for inviting me here. And thank you all for joining. It means a lot. Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said before a speech, be sincere, be brief, be seated. Words of wisdom that I will try to follow tonight. The theme of the program is Black communities coming together during the pandemic. The pandemic has become a household word right now. As we deal with the devastation of COVID-19 and the pandemic realities of systemic racism in our country. With the pandemic of COVID-19 and systemic racism, the question for tonight that we're faced with is where do we go from here? Now that's the trillion dollar question, right? For those of us who know the answer to that question, well, we're probably feeling pretty good right now. But for those of us who aren't quite sure, well, we probably need to think about it a little bit more. We're in the year of 2021, and it would be a monumental understatement to say that we're living through unprecedented times. In fact, for the sake of this talk and for the sake of time, I'll only go back in time about 10 months. We're going to reflect on our country 10 months ago just to prove we're living through unprecedented times. Now, let's see. March 2020, COVID-19 forced us to shutter in place, quarantined and afraid to go outside. And just when we thought we couldn't get anything any worse, Asian giant hornets or killer wasps, as they call them, were spotted for the first time in the United States. Then a series of African-American deaths that impacted us all so profoundly that we'll never be the same. I know I won't. And then there's our president, our former president, impeached twice, and currently the central figure behind an assault on our nation's capital. And yes, he was released of any uh, wrongdoing over the weekend. He was acquitted. But I don't think we'll hear the last of that. So yes, I think we're all very qualified when we say that we as a people, we have a lot going on. So now what? When I think about where we go from here, one of the first things that pops in my mind is, well, Google it. 
Google is pretty smart, right? We use it a lot. I mean, come on. If you need directions, what do you do? You Google it. If you need a recipe, well, you Google it. For you young folks out there, if you need the answers to your test and you didn't study, what do you do? You Google it. Now, I'm not advocating that, but we know you do it. Anyway, you get the picture. If you want an answer, you can Google it. So why not Google this topic? Where do we go from here? Through the magic of technology, I can show you one of the top results when I Googled that question. Now, this is what popped up. Singer Deborah Cox and her official music video entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Okay, we may be on to something. Indeed, this just might be some good advice, just what we needed tonight. If you've not heard the song, don't worry. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to save my voice. But let me read the first couple of standards. Miss Cox says, When you're in love, some things you take for granted until someone pulls it apart and leaves you with half of your heart. How do I trade the best I had for less without giving up? Should I slowly accept that we'll be no more than just friends? How do I know when to let go? I know what I'm feeling inside but part of me wants to try. So I, so tell me, where do we go from here? Well, okay. Well, I get the feeling that Miss Cox is referring to a failed love. Those words can be applied to many of the circumstances we're dealing with right now. For example, have you ever trusted someone or something and they failed you? Now, I'm not talking about your spouse. It was just Valentine's Day, so let's give our spouses a pass. But... Has a child failed you? Think back. Has a politician or a police officer ever failed you? Maybe a celebrity, a parent, or a pastor. Okay. Don't want to step on any toes here, so I'm going to keep it moving. Sorry, pastors. Back to Google. Google pointed me to several reviews of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. book entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? Now, I love this book, and it's probably the thing that influenced me the most when thinking about the title for my talk. Now, let's hear what Dr. King has to say on the subject. Now, for those of you who don't know, Dr. King gave a speech back in 1964 where he touched on many of the themes that he later wrote in the book. One of the central themes is that of hope. We've heard about hope a lot, right? Dr. King reflects upon the civil rights movement. He discusses what African Americans should do with their new freedoms found in laws such as the Voting Rights Act of 1965. He concludes that all Americans must unite in order to fight poverty and create equality of opportunity. He emphasizes that he is neither a Marxist nor a socialist, as some folks accused him of being. He instead advocated for a united social movement that would act within both the Republican and the Democratic parties. Hold on. The Republicans and the Democrats, he's saying they should work together. Wow, that's, that's a great idea. He wanted to establish a clear contrast between his own views and that of the Black Power Movement. The Reverend Dr. King argues that abandoning the fight for nonviolent social change and replacing it with personal militarism tinged with black separatism. He wasn't in support of that. He said it was immoral and self-defeating. He also criticized modern American whites for having inaccurate, unrealistic views of African Americans' ongoing plight, even after the legal reform undertaken under then-President Lyndon B. Johnson. He asserted that radical change is still not just, but necessary. About the economy, Dr. King concluded that rather than having a mere welfare state or a general class struggle, U.S. government measures should act more directly to benefit individuals by some kind of guaranteed income. Dr. King said, and I quote, I am now convinced that the simplest approach will prove to be the most effective. The solution to poverty is to abolish it directly by a now widely discussed measure, the guaranteed income. To be clear, a guaranteed income or a universal basic income, as it's sometimes called today, 
is not the same as the higher minimum wage that we're hearing about right now. It's not the same thing. No, instead, it's a policy designed to ensure that each American has a certain concrete sum of money to spend each year. It equates to giving every adult a tax credit that would essentially become a cash payment for families that don't pay much tax. All this seems like great advice given by Dr. King in 1964. Now that's important. I'm 54 years old. I was born in 1966, there's two years after. Dr. King told us this in 1964. However, however, today, we're still dealing with many of the same issues that our mothers and fathers faced and their mothers and fathers faced before them. And for some of us, their mothers and fathers before them. Now let that sink in. Basically, what I'm saying is it wasn't that long ago, folks. We're dealing with the same stuff that we were dealing with back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and 90s. The same stuff. We're in the same place. Now, yes, we've, we've made some advances, especially when it comes to race relations. Yes, we have. We've made progress. But in many aspects, we're still a long way away from where we need to be. I would say in most aspects. You'd be amazed at the number of people who don't realize that slavery was abolished in this country just 156 years ago. My grandfather was born in 1899, Lawrence Smith. Just 34 years after the ratification of the 13th Amendment, my grandfather was born. When I speak to my own children, they're amazed that my grandfather was almost born into slavery and that my great-grandparents were, in fact, slaves. The atrocity of hate doesn't run far in our country. We're not talking about a long, long time ago. We're talking about my grandfather was almost born into slavery. Sadly, I don't think that racism has gotten any worse in the United States. It's just gotten videotaped and documented for all of us to see. However, I'm convinced that those amongst us who have hate in their heart for their fellow man, they feel safer now than they ever have before. If you don't believe me, flip on your TV, open up your social media channel, flip through it. Look at your Twitter, your Facebook feed. Look at the things that people say. It's hurtful. It won't take long to see how some people feel about race and equality in our country. So Rick, where do we go from here? The answer to that question cannot be found in a simple Google search. The fact is, there's no single way to unteach years of systemic racism and hate in our country. But this I do know. We must rework the fabric that is at the very core of our communities. We must find a sense of community and a common cause, like the eradication of COVID-19, or maybe the eradication of racism. We must all do this together. It can't be just a part of the population. Everyone needs to come together, the majority. So with that in mind, each of us, regardless of our passions or our politics, can help heal America through actions, not just words. We must have uncomfortable conversations about race, inequality, and ignorance. We have to be willing to hear each other and understand that we all come from a set of implicit biases that we must be willing to recognize, understand, and overcome. We must recognize, understand, and overcome the implicit biases that we all have. We must volunteer and support your nonprofits like the United Way of Ross County or many of the other wonderful nonprofit organizations we have right here in Ross County. If everyone, if everyone helped one, just imagine the impact that we could have. I'm gonna say that again. If everyone helped one, imagine the impact that we could have. We must engage in the sharing and appreciation of human stories. Stories of oppression and endurance, we need to hear those of privilege and perseverance. We have so many. We need to stop shaping the narrative to fit whom we think we are and deal with the realities of who we really are. We're a great country, fact. But also a fact is that we're a country that was built on hate. We were built on the blood and sweat of our ancestors, both mine and yours. We must be willing to not only to listen, but to lead. We need honest leadership at all levels, from the local PTA all the way to the White House. Now, related to that, we need to hold our leaders accountable. 
We need to do that by reading, educating ourselves. Read the local news, watch the national news, listen to a podcast, your radio, whatever it is that you do, but you've got to educate yourself. Being present at, at uh, county and city meetings, that's very important too. You've got to be there. You have to know what's going on in your community and allow your voice to be heard. Grassroots efforts can go a long way in influence leaders at all levels. We've got to influence our leaders to do the right thing. But first, you have to know the issues. I'm going to pause while I take a sip here. Now, we must fairly compensate our teachers and address the achievement gaps in our education system. It's not okay that some of us have access to the best teachers, the best technology, the best everything, and some of us have to deal with the worst of everything, the hand-me-downs. Yet we grade our students on the same scale and give them the same test. It's the definition of insanity, folks. If you keep doing the same thing and expect a different outcome, that's it's not realistic. We must fix our healthcare system and address issues of poverty. How can we think about leveling the playing field when far too many of our children are sick and hungry, living in food deserts and living in food insecure homes? They can't study, they can't concentrate because they're hungry. We need to, we need to address those issues. Finally, we must address the inequality in our judicial system. Privilege should not entitle you to a slap on the hand when the same offense caused other people to have excessive jail terms. That's not fair. Driving while black can no longer be an acceptable offense. I'm going to leave that there because I've got too many stories I can tell you. We need to support our law enforcement officers, but that support comes with training, education, and the tools to do their job. We have to keep our law enforcement officers the men and women who are on the front lines of everything, we must keep them safe and give them the tools they need. But you hear a lot about a few bad apples in the police department. Well, having a few bad apples is not acceptable. It's just not. They're making life and death decisions. So having a few bad apples, that just doesn't fly. Speaking of flying, would UPS be okay with having a few bad apple pilots? I don't think so. We need to get rid of the superior race mentality. I'm no better than you are. You're no better than I am. Let's keep it moving. This past year has created what I like to call a profound mirror moment for our country. Now, what's a profound mirror moment? Well, it's easy to blame others, but we need to step back and look in the mirror before you start placing blame on others. If you don't like what you see, then change it. It's time that we do something and stop talking about it. That's where we go from here, folks. I leave you with one of my favorite poems, Let America Be America Again, written by a true American hero, Mr. Langston Hughes. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. America. America never was America, America to me. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its dream. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen or those earned. Let it be the great strong land of love. Where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme. That any man be crushed by one of us. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. We cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore. But opportunity is real and life is free.
Equality is in the air we breathe. So I would like to say that we are one today. Let us be one in the future. Power to all of us. There's never been equality for me. Nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Who said the free? When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. And we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. There should be a lot of systems beyond this. This Freedom Service. Restoration Act was signed into law Such last week. You can see there was blood coming out of her eye. Yeah, blood, blood. blood coming out of her uh, eye. I don't know what I said. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Here's a brief summary of my executive orders. New vetting to keep terrorists out of the United States, a border wall, and a great rebuilding of the armed services of the United States. For all the dreams we've dreamed and all the hopes we've held, the millions who have nothing for our pay except the dream that's almost dead today. today Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death. The rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies. We, we the, the people, people must, must redeem. redeem. The land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains and the endless plain. All, all the stretch of these great green states and make America again. Thank you all, and good night.